This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to take a look at this 1200 series PS4 and to be honest this is one that I'm kind of making as a reaction to something I've noticed uh, happening on the channel recently and that is way back when when the 1200 series PlayStation 4 uh, made an appearance uh, just a few weeks after launch I ended up with a blodding unit which unfortunately had um, had its warranty expired uh, and consequently it ended up to me to see if I could fix it. Now unfortunately in the end the machine wasn't fixable and the guy who sent it in very kindly let me keep it uh, for spares. So in the end that's what happened to that machine. But in the meantime uh, what I actually did was I documented sort of like um, the processes for disassembling it and a look at the internals to see how the board had changed. Now that wasn't intended as such as a disassembly tutorial but that's kind of what people are using it for. Now, consequently, it's not the best sort of thing to use for that. There are bits in there that are blocked by my arms and elbows. So at some point in the future, I would like to redo that video um, so that you've got something proper there to reference. But in the meantime, uh, I thought I'd knock together a quick video today whilst the sort of main video that I wanted to get up this week is still in the middle of being edited together to sort of give you a few tips and a few pointers to where people tend to struggle in that video. So it's getting quite a, a number of views recently, but there are a couple of common things that seem to be cropping up in the comments a lot that people are struggling with. So to that end, I thought I'd knock this video together today as a little bit of um, an addendum to that video, if you like, if you're struggling to give you a few tips and pointers on the common places that people tend to find trouble when they're disassembling these units. And the first thing we're going to look at today is getting the base of the unit off, because that seems to be a really common one that people struggle with. So let's get to it. Now, I'm fairly sure that a lot of the time this is because people are following the wrong sort of disassembly guides. So they're following the guides for the 1200 series machines, when in fact they want to be following the guides for the 1100 series machines. And you'll see why shortly. Now back when these were new, it was easy to identify a 1200 series machine because these top hard disk drive covers here were matte black plastic. As you can see on this one, it's the same finish on this hard drive cover as is on the rest of the console. Now on the earlier 1100 series machines, they used to have this shiny, glossy black plastic uh, lid here, as you can see. You see it's shiny? So they used to have that. Now unfortunately, enough time has passed that a lot of these machines have now wound their way sort of second, third hand. They've been through Gumtree, Facebook Marketplace and eBay and sort of bits and pieces have been chopped, changed around and everything. And now, because these tops are completely interchangeable, there are 1,100 series consoles with these matte black plastic tops on. There are 1,200 CVs machines with these glossy caps on. Some people prefer the look of one or the other, so they just change them out. And now you can't really tell. So how do you know which one you've got to make sure you're using the right technique to get the base off? Now, the first and easiest way to tell is to take a look at the front of the unit, at the power and eject buttons, okay? So on the earlier consoles, these were a capacitive type, and I'll just see if I can get you a little bit closer into this one here so you can see, hopefully. But this is, a 12, this is definitely a 1200 series machine, okay? Now, you'll notice that the button itself, hopefully the camera won't go too mental here, but it actually... I can click it. Hopefully you can hear this if I get a bit closer. So you can physically click it in. So when you press it, it physically clicks. And the same with the eject button. So if you go down a little bit further, the eject button here, you can see I can physically click that in and it clicks. Okay. Now on the earlier consoles, on the 1000 and... 1100 series machines these buttons were entirely different and I'll just get one in here to show you Okay, so here's a an earlier 1100 series machine and you can see actually these actually don't stick out as far They're quite they're flush with the surface of that hard disk drive cover and they don't click you can't press them in They don't press they don't click they don't make any noise and that's because they're capacitive So basically all you can do is rest your finger on them. You can't press them. You can't push them in that is a 1000 1100 series machine you can't sort of do anything with those those buttons have to stay because the 
construction of the board for the power and eject button assemblies are completely different so if no matter what it looks like if your buttons are like this you can't click them in you can only sort of rub your finger along them then that's a 1100 series machine you need to follow a different tutorial because getting the base off those is completely different to getting a base off a 1200 okay so the other big difference between a 1100 series machine and a 1200 series machine are the screw caps okay so on a 1200 series machine you have two screws on the rear which secure both the upper and lower face plates to the console on a 1100 series machine you have four and again this is where i think a lot of the confusion comes from because people actually have a 1100 series machine with four screws and some of the screws are still in there so they can't get the bases off so to make sure you've got a 1200 series machine basically there is a difference here so the warranty screw holes here at the top in the middle and the bottom are in the same place as they are on the 1100 series machines but on the 1100 series machines you'll have some glossy black plastic stickers over these two end points here so where we've just got an air vent and there's no screws and there's nothing there on the early 1100 series machines there's some glossy black plastic stickers i'll see if i can pop a photograph of one of those machines in here for you now so you can see them but basically underneath those stickers are two more t9r screws so those are the t9 security torques uh, bits with a little metal spike in the middle of them just like the same screws that are in here and here so if you have those two black glossy plastic stickers covering these two end caps again you've likely got a 1100 series machine so if you can't get the base off and you've removed these two make sure you don't have these glossy black plastic stickers here covering these end caps because if you do that's probably why the base won't come off okay so we've deduced that you now have a 1200 series machine and we definitely have the right machine to be following the disassembly guide for so what do you do to get the base off if you're struggling okay now this is something that i didn't get across very well on the old video it was when the channel first started and i was filming it on a panasonic tz7 digital camera so i couldn't really get very close in but i'm going to show you better hopefully now so essentially what you need to do to get the base off this is take the two warranty stickers off here and take the two t9r screws out from the top and the bottom here in the center you can see the two screw holes here this machine has had these screws removed already it's one of my parts machines so it doesn't have many screws in it at all really so basically once you've removed those then we need to take a look at the side of the machine okay then so here we are at the rear of the machine so this here is the hard disk drive cover so this is the top side of the console and this here is the bottom side this is the base this is the piece we're going to be taking off okay so these are the two holes here for the screws that we've just removed okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to go up a little bit here and we're going to take a look in this bottom corner okay i want to see if i can get you a little bit closer in hopefully the camera's gonna play ball okay lovely there we go so we can see here that there's a line in the plastic so this is the base so this is the bit that's coming off okay so if we take a look in this split here which is down the left and right hand sides of the console we can see here that on the base there's this crack in the plastic here where the two uh, bits join so this is the base of the console we'll be removing and this is the mid frame so this is what everything else is bolted into internally okay and then this here is the top of the hard disk drive cover so we can see here that there is a very very tiny split just where i'm running my screwdriver here we can see there's that crack there okay so what we're going to do is we're going to get a screwdriver a flat blade preferably it's a fairly small one you can use anything really anything that's got a bit of a point on it that'll put a bit of pressure on there okay so this screwdriver tip i've got here is labeled as a 45 i'm not entirely sure which one that is but anyway so we can see the crack there okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the point of this screwdriver tip and i'm going to place it right on the edge of that seam okay so where that split is is where i'm going to put my screwdriver tip now i'm just going to try and raise you up a little bit higher just so that you can maybe see over the top you can see the split just there okay so i'm going to put my screwdriver tip right on that join okay right where that line is and then i'm going to use this side here as a sort of fulcrum just to sort of push against 
very, very gently. And that's all it needs. You don't need to mark it. You don't need to go at the bullet to gate at it. Literally, just that little bit of pressure is enough to pop that free. Okay? And there we go. There we are. And then it's the same on the other side. Okay, so this is the other side. As you can see there, you just about see the line there. Okay, what we're going to do, same again. And there we go. It's as simple as that. It's, really, it's even easier if you can actually use two hands to do it. So just put where that seam is, tip of a screwdriver or you know anything with a with a fair decent point on it. And just put a little bit of pressure on where that seam is. You'll see it start to move. And then literally what I do is just put the tiniest little bit of pressure on there. So a tiniest bit of pressure on with that line and then just get your finger and flick it. And that's usually enough to bring it off. Doing it that way actually avoids you. You can see here where this one's been apart quite a few times before now and somebody's marred the plastic but you you know if you do it that way by just putting the slightest bit of pressure on that gap on that seam with your screwdriver point and then just use your finger to flick it so you're not actually pushing with the screwdriver because that's how you mark it you literally just put a tiny bit of pressure there on the get on the on the join between the two surfaces and then just flick it with your finger and off it'll come so the next part that people tend to struggle with is removing the power supply from these things. Now, again, these aren't too difficult to do. You've just got to sort of have some faith because you have to give it a bit of a tug. OK, so what you need to do first is remove the screws. So there's a couple of Phillips head screws here and here. Remove those. And then there's some T9Rs again, just here, here and here. OK, so there's five screws in total you're going to remove. Once you've removed those, essentially what you do, where this little tab is here, where this screw is at the back, get a hold of the machine so it doesn't go anywhere. Lift this tab, OK, and you'll feel it. Right Now it feels like it's grabbing on this side, and it is because there's two forks for the 12 volt that sit over this end of the connector. But don't fear. Give it a tug. You'll feel it and you'll hear it snap like that, and you think, ooh... But trust me, just get it in the middle, lift it. Don't tug it at this point because there's a fly lead just underneath here that's connected between the power supply and the motherboard. Then this just unhooks and away it comes. And that's it. You've just got to have a bit of faith. Trust me in that one. It doesn't feel very nice, but it's the only way to do it. And it's easy. OK, so now while we're on the subject of power supplies, there's another really common one that comes up. And that is this bottom right hand corner power supply screw here so it's a little phillips head screw and a lot of people say that when i come to turn this and come to screw it back in it just kind of spins on me forever now on this one we'll see that as we tighten it down it locks into place okay so there's no particular problem on this machine but there could be if you miss one very vital step now that one very vital step that you might have missed is sitting underneath this cover, okay? So this is the rear of the machine. So this is where the HDMI ports and everything plug in. So this is the bottom right hand corner of the machine and you've got this black plastic cover here with two T9R screws in there. So we'll remove those, okay? And then we'll lift this cover off. And you will notice this thing here. <laughs> I've got a magnetic screwdriver tip. So, as you can see there, there is this little metal thing just here. Essentially, it's a plate with a screw thread in there. That's all that is. But it's tiny, as you can see there. Not much to it at all, is there? And basically, that just lifts out. So, as I say, this is a magnetic screwdriver tip. But as you can see there, it's just a little metal plate with a screw thread in it. That's all it does. And that secures that bottom right hand corner power supply screw. So if when you're coming to screw yours back together, that screw's just spinning round and it's not going in, it's because that plate is likely missing. Now it is small and it does drop out when you remove that black plastic cap that goes over the top of it. So make sure that when you reassemble your machine, this metal plate goes in and make sure it goes back in with those two little feet, those two tabs there, bending in towards the board. Okay, so those two little feet go through those two holes top and bottom. So it just sits in like that. And then the plastic cap locates over the top of a couple of little plastic sprues. 
So there's one just here. Okay. And there you are. And then the two T9R screws go back in on the top. And that's it. So now when you come to put that bottom right hand side screw back in, you'll turn it, it'll tighten, and it will secure the, the power supply. Ooh, and now this one's a doozy. This one is the one that gets everybody. It seems to do going by the comments <laughs> on that other video. And that is just how do you put the power button back in? Yeah, it can be a bit of a nightmare. So essentially, as you can see here, this is the power button. Now, most people can get it out because all they do is they lift this top part here and it just slides forward. OK, so I'll just demonstrate that now for you really quickly. But that's how you'll find it when you come to disassemble the machine. All you do to remove it. Again, I suppose this is useful. If you need to remove it when you come to disassemble it, you lift this black tab up here. OK, and just slide it forward. OK, so that tab there is this one here on the top. OK, but when it comes to putting it back in, it can be a bit difficult and it's also really easy to break things. So pay attention. OK, now this is tiny and it's really difficult to sort of get on camera for you. But you can just about see here there's a little black plastic thing there sticking out just past this green edge where my screwdriver is. That is the tactile surface mount button that actually powers on the machine. This black plastic button that we put in essentially just nudges against that with this surface here, okay? So essentially that just literally rocks back and forward and knocks into that little contact switch there. Now, if you get these buttons in wrong or you force them in, it's very, very easy. In fact, even doing it the right way, if it's been done enough times, is enough to sometimes break that surface mount button. And that's a pain because that requires removing the motherboard from the console and physically resoldering a new button in there. Now then, finding those can be quite difficult, but in fact, some Nokia Lumia 820s, I think it is. I'll put the right model in the description. If you've got an old one of those lying around somewhere, the volume keys are the exact same button. And I will also try and put a link in the description to somewhere you can actually buy the buttons themselves brand new. So you can put them back in there. <laughs> because they are a sod and they do break even at the best of times. Now as far as getting this button actually back in the machine goes, what I'll do is I'll try and get you down more to the front of the machine so you can see exactly where we're putting things. Okay, so to best explain where this goes, we're right down here at the front of this machine. Okay, so I'll bring the button itself back in. OK, so you can see here, here's the power button. This is the front of it. This is the rear. OK, so. As we said before, this top part here, OK, where my screwdriver is now, hooks over the top of this hole here. So this is the hole we were looking down where we could just about see the power button sticking out from this back edge. OK, this piece here where my screwdriver is now knocks against that physical switch on the bottom side of the motherboard here. Again, the piece, the little tiny black bit that was sticking out there is the actual switch itself. Well, this part of that plastic button knocks against the switch itself. OK, this here hooks onto the underside of the board. OK, and this bit here just sits here. So this surface here runs along this bottom surface in here. OK, and then this little hook on the bottom of the button sits inside this hole just here. So right where my screwdriver is now, there's a little hole underneath. That's where this little hook thing here resides. So the best way to put this back on and get it right, because as I say, getting it wrong is not advised, because what can happen is, is that this button, this part here, hooks around the button and pulls it and it's not very strong and it will just rip it off the board so it's important you get this bit right so essentially all I do is the bottom surface here okay where it runs across this bottom surface of the button sits on there so just rest it against it okay like that so it sits in and then just slide it backwards okay so I'll get it just to the point now where the top side of this button and I'll lift you up so that top hook now is just about sat on this front edge here so I can't push it any further back at the minute okay now we'll come back down the front and I'll come slightly sideways so hopefully you can see this if I get you in focus okay so we can see now look so this is the hole 
this is that bottom hole I was pointing out a second ago. Okay, and you can see that the hook on this button here is just going to sit in the top side of this hole. Okay, so what I like to do is just get this back edge of this button. Okay, and just lift it slightly so it comes over this top lip. So you can see now, look, the hook is right on this middle bit just before the hole. Okay, and we're making sure that this bottom hook here now is going into that hole. So you can see the hook just about where my screwdriver tip is going into that hole. Now all you can do, gently push it back. Okay, and we can see now that this here is hooked over the top and is now in the hole. We can see now that we can't remove that and we can move it around and we can also now click it and that's perfect. So you can feel it click, pop in and out and we can get it and we can't remove it because it's all hooked into position. That's perfect. That's now correctly in place and now it's just a case of reassembling the rest of the machine as you wish. Okay then ladies and gentlemen, so those are the panels and pitfalls of the disassembly and reassembly of the 1200 series PlayStation 4. Hopefully you've enjoyed that video today and you've learned something, and if you have, then I'd really appreciate it if you've liked what you've seen here today. If you could just pop down below that video and hit that big thumbs up button, it really does help me and it helps the channel grow immensely in ways you wouldn't believe. It would mean so much to me and I thank you for anybody who is willing to do that for me. Again, anybody who enjoys what they've seen today and wants more of it if you go and check out the rest of the videos on my channel there's over 100 on there now uh, all messing around with games consoles and macbooks and everything else uh, a lot of component level hardware repairs and things on there if that's your sort of thing or it sounds like it might be then again you know feel free to go ahead and check out everything else we've got on there and again subscribe for more for when the latest videos and everything release and ding that bell to be notified once those go live uh, again if you uh, I'm in need of a repair of your own and you'd like me to take a look at things for you and you're in the UK or the EU then feel free to drop me an email to my business email address that's whiteyandrewpaul at outlook.com that can be found in the description of the video feel free to hit me up down there and like I say if you're in the UK or the EU I will happily get a quote for a repair to you as soon as I can uh, if you're elsewhere then unfortunately I can't provide you with a repair service but what I can provide you with are components and bits and pieces that you might need in order to fix your own consoles or again if you're a business and you're in need of parts then feel free to hit me up and i'll see what i can do to supply you with what you need so i thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen and i will see you in the next video very shortly so for me for now it's bye bye stay safe and i hope life treats you well Many thanks for watching then ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate and of course subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We have plenty more content on there and there's lots more to come. So that part there, oh, it's supposed to be that again, that's wrong. <laughs>